Uh, my name is Elizabeth Moen, and on behalf of Poetry Ireland, I am delighted to welcome you here tonight to the second reading taking place as part of the Poetry Ireland Introduction Series 2021. Um, 2021 was a record-breaking year for the series with over 220 applications received, over 2,000 pages of poetry. Um, this was the first year that we accepted submissions for the series by email, which was a small mercy as we might have had a falling out with our postman otherwise. Um, we are really grateful to have the award-winning poet Sean Hewitt as this year's English language adjudicator and to have the inimitable Afric McKay deliberating over our Irish language submissions. From these 2,000 pages of poetry, they chose the poets you'll be hearing from tonight. As a little bit of background, Poetry Ireland has hosted introductions every year since 1989. Poets who have come through the series over the years include Stephen Sexton, Doreen Negrifa, Pat Boren, Victoria Kenefick, John McAuliffe, amongst countless other world-class Irish poets who have then gone on to publish first, second, and subsequent collections. The aim of this series is to provide talented new poets on the cusp of publishing a collection with the opportunity to work with top-tier mentors who this year included Sean and Afric, as well as Jessica Trainer and Anne Marina Coran. Most importantly, however, introductions helps to forge new connections and friendships amongst the poets who take part. It has been such an immense joy and privilege to get to know the poets that you'll be hearing from tonight, um, so I won't delay any further. I'll introduce our first two poets now, as well as Laura Elizabeth Hughes, who we're extremely excited will be joining us tonight with some music. Um, this event will run straight through with no interval, uh, so after we hear from Laura, I'll introduce our final three poets, and then we'll close out with one last song. So, first up, we have Simon Costello. Simon is published in Banshee, The Irish Times, Magma, The North, Poetry Ireland Review, Rattle, The Rialto, Singing Fly, The Tangerine, The Best New British and Irish Poets 2019 to 2021, and on RTE Radio's Poetry File. A selection of his poems will appear in an anthology published by the Lifeboat Press. He is a winner of the Rialto Poetry Prize and has received bursaries from the Arts Council of Ireland and the Words Ireland National Mentoring Program. His poems were shortlisted for the Bridport Prize, the Fish Poetry Prize, and the Redline Book Festival Poetry Competition. He lives in County Offaly and works for Granta Magazine. Shivani Donal is a bilingual poet. She was born and raised in Listowel, County Kerry. After finishing her degree in BCL, Law and Irish, she undertook a master's in European Law and Irish Language in UCC. She's currently studying to be a secondary school teacher in NUIG. Her first book, A Collection of Irish Language Poetry, at Agus Intak Vet Bio, was published by Koshkim in 2020. She was the winner of the Unpublished Collection of Poetry Award at Listowel Writers Week in 2019, and she also performed spoken word poetry under the alias The Puffin Poet. Dublin songwriter Laura Elizabeth Hughes, his music career has taken her on a journey from modest beginnings performing covers on her own YouTube channel, uh, in 2012, to att attracting a global audience of over 2.6 million views. On stage is where Laura feels most at home and truly connects with people. Throughout her time as a performer, she has supported acts such as Dermot Kennedy, James Bay, Billy Martin, and Little Hours. She recently toured with Irish folk duo Cry Monster Cry. Her Ireland Music Week performance in 2019 brought her to the attention of industry delegates around the globe and led her to be named by the Irish Times as one of 10 acts to see before they're famous. Hughes's latest EP, We, Myself, I, has been described as her finest work to date. The record navigates feelings of grief, of unjust theft of time, of potential, of curiosity as to how other people were seemingly rowing through the shit that was 2020. Laura's inimitable vocals combined with her arresting lyrical ability has seen her earn plaudits from both the media and her peers and established herself as a major songwriting talent. So please give a very warm welcome to Simon Costello. And I first off, I just want to say thanks to Poetry Ireland for organising this and to the other intros poets from, for tonight and the ones that came to support us from last night. And I especially want to thank uh, my beautiful friends that came to support me, Owen, Hannah, Jamelia, Susanna, Georgia and Luke. Woo! Woo! Uh, um, right. This first poem is a love poem and I affectionately titled it Taxidermy Ethics for Beginners. Outside, a dog is hollowing out the chest of a cat that's been knocked down by one of the neighbor's vans, who even now I'm certain will never come forward and admit to it. But while I watch this animal sustain itself on the particles of another, I know somewhere a local bistro is throwing fresh scallops into the recycling bin, while a child's boat made a newspaper slips down a storm drain. And 50 years earlier, 
Robert Lowell is rinsing out his private correspondence with Elizabeth Hardwick, compiling them into what will be published as The Dolphin. And see, it's this divisive segment of my Zoom lecture, the consequences of his practice not only for the other party involved, but the implications it would have on ethics and writing, that has me thinking of when our teeth collided into ivory fragments at noon, how we pocketed each other's dislodged bones, the way limestone cradles fossil in its yellow basement. And like a depleted cat taken home from a roadside and posed, I've never felt more emptied. Because even now, I hear the scratching of the French sculptor I keep in the dormer attic, sitting down to the model suspended midair, gorging his hands on moist clay, summoning an interpretation of anatomy from spun muck as they exist in the eye as static atoms. And like a magway worm stopped mid-sentence in a bottle of mescal, all this is nothing but the still freefall. And it hurts to think of them up there, ghosting in this private exchange, Relativism dictates that by the end, what is produced will look anything but human. So the model's identity is protected, and isn't this nominally ethical? Wouldn't the opposite be to drag you out in the middle of traffic, just as the scallops are beginning to turn, as animals are being stamped with perpetual license plates, pry wide your Adonis husk, set off fireworks from your ribcage, ignite your name in the sky and say, this cannibal lance work is uncompromising art. And will you believe me when I say I did it all for you? Um, yeah, this one's called uh, Definitions of Love. Love is cream lacquer jam smuggled through the mouth's quiet tunnel when you're starving. Is a library book returned on time with its spine intact. Is dredging the bottom of the marina trench and finding my sunken father. Is a bullet singing past its missed target. Is a wallet handed in at the local Garda station with the 50 still in it. Is the skeleton, the body's inner scaffold given much needed support. Is the brain, the gooey conductor lighting up the skull's theatre. Is your neighbour setting the estate bins on fire so someone will see him. Is the 1993 film alive. Is survivors crashed up the Andes, passing around chunks of co-pilot to survive. And with that in mind, love is given the best parts of myself to you. Thanks, lads. Hello, to you, Vicarja. I'm Conestoshev. It's Misha Shivani Gonal, and I'm an Irish language poet. So I'm going to be reading my poems in Irish first, and then the English translation, for those of you that don't have Irish. First of all, I'd like to say a huge thank you to the Poetry Ireland Introduction Series. It's such an honour to be selected um, this year, and also it's such an honour to share the stage with such vibrant, incredible poets, and it was really such a privilege to get to meet you and listen to your work. Um, so for my first poem, it's about a connection that a person can have to a particular landscape or a place. It's something that really draws my imagination, and for me, a landscape that really speaks to me is Dingle on Dangan. When I go to Dingle, I feel a profound connection to the landscape. And when I speak Irish there, I feel like it dips into some deeper knowledge that I'm trying to unlock um, that I don't have, that I'm trying to connect to, I guess. So this poem is a love letter to Dingle. And the peg referred to in the poem is Peg Sears, the iconic and wonderful Shanachie, which I'm sure you've all heard of. Is Bwinnock Peg Awesome? The V Reint Lehente Hata Agom in Multin Gert. The V Gak Ille Orlok den Talov e Kasa Olagoen. Suig Uem, Suig Uem, Suig Uem. 
Legis le magraim er kinnik reha iha glasim avail, na fall to lechocha san oriv. An shin, hriel me dornan feilan dulsk agus gri fachi. Dehis an far marv, gak gyuta do. In a yig, clock on, kirkoga, kush, and shali, shilta, a vilt. Is on shin, nihilon. Kyaun er kyaun. An vlaskade moor, beginish, agus inish na bro. Vlashis ila olok, dagus cruetan on down. O hus gadera. Gadig revan ot e glucol a mach urum. Donus glofi dinner. Govekvi tear reche. O kyaun go cuss. Is credem go fear a shot. A rare. Excava on las. Makawal cracking cartool. Vohig me aring im a volug moor. Bound the blaske di ek chak de dhuna arish a dortsalam hain. Is punak peg asum. I spent a few days in the salt lands of Ballyferreter, where every inch of the land was crying out, Take me, take me. Take me. I went ahead and tasted the smooth green hills, electric fences and all. Then I chanced a fistful of honeysuckle, sea tide dults and a swarm of wasps. I ate the sleeping giant, every bit of him. After I devoured the beehive huts beside the weeping willow, and then the islands, one by one, the great Blasket, Beganish and Inishnabro. I tasted all the beauty and horrors of the world from beginning to end, until the place was spilling out of me. If you opened up a person, you would see landscapes. And that, I truly believe. Yesterday, the flavours laid my body bare, like paper skin. I felt a sharp pain in my swollen stomach. That's the pull of the blaskets, I said to myself. And Peg burst out of me. Good My second poem kind of focuses on taste and how the two languages that I speak, both Irish and English, taste different to me. Um, the Irish to me tastes warm, life-giving, almost delicious, and English, in a way, tastes sort of stale and stultifying sometimes, having been fermented in years of oppression, and speaking Irish is just something that feels more natural to me sometimes. So this poem is called Blas Televish Statoch Ata Erverle. Blas Televish Statoch Ata Erverle. Marvyok Ishke Shulinok Te. Marvyok Diatok Tatoega Krohanok, a curren on Talarm do Ton or Shul. Marvyok Su Natoega O Kuagachonokt. Marvyok Anra Ramalok, the Quakers. Marvyok Ishke Shilton on Ball. Maravyuk Bali Sufrizun Vailin Lersu Salaka Babi. Maravyuk Shkrad Lainver Smerha er the Skornok. Klita Lesh. Klita Lesh. Blas na Milta at Ha Eganelge. Maravyuk Slay the Miala Fiena. Maravyuk Kurud Er er Lahrig Timple na Jeshoega. Maravyuk Im Ivrama Aran Soida. Maravyok li na greena kera gaji. Maravyok kika blocked for. Maravyok jora vihil ikilon. Maravyok and kade fog la stranger. Er heel tu, shanahana ve a got there. No vlashe, autagen, autagen. English tastes like TV static. English tastes like TV static like warm, sparkling water, like the juddering cigar smoke that sets off the fire alarm, like nettle juice from Connacht, like slimy Quaker soup, like gutter water from the pail, like the walls of May's prison during Bobby's dirty protest, like a shriek of pain smeared along your throat, stuck there, stuck there. Irish, tastes like thousand-year-old laughter, like wild, gloopy honey, like the sweet dusting of air slanting around the blackberry bush, like butter windowed by soda bread, like a goji berry sunset, 
like a flutter of breast milk, like Michael Collins' tears, like a first kiss with a stranger you feel you have already met or tasted before, somewhere, somewhere. Good morning, Margaret. So the last poem I'm going to read is a bilingual poem. It's both in English and in Irish. Uh, as a bilingual poet, I sometimes feel like I am split between the two languages. And so the poem that I'm going to read is split into two different voices. It's a strike-through poem, which means that some of the words are redacted or crossed out, but they're still a part of the poem. And I guess the redacted parts are both in Irish, and they're also things that I want to say, but I'm holding back from saying. So it represents the Irish language as something that is silenced and disregarded, perhaps. Um, and I'm going to read the redacted parts in a whisper. So that's why I'm whispering, if you're wondering. Is fila da hangak me. I am a bilingual poet, which means I am split. Which means I have two tongues to crack open verbs, to softly burst the everyday emotions that lie, fizz, lurk within, like lizards in the sun, postponing our lives indefinitely. I have two souls. Mastu. Is Phila Moor le Raw e Durni Griefa? Durni Griefa is an Irish language poet who has achieved great success when her work was translated into English. <laughs> I could follow in her footsteps before Unfial Donin and Eshin Offuk. I imagine the shapes my poem would take if I was as, as successful as her in English. My imagination could bend wonderfully, impossibly too, could exist in spaces it does not usually live, and in doing so, it would take on the same shape as everyone else's. I abandon. Take a break from writing in my native tongue for a while. There is an Irish literary boom that I could be a part of. I start to believe that I can write an instinct or impulse in English just as well as Irish, and at some point, I empty out become a conduit for words I don't believe in. And at some point, I begin to see that my duality has done some good. There was a time when I dreamed exclusively in Irish. Back then, my dreams were actually enjoyable. <laughs> now, I have the same dream nightly. Tom Ellis. I'm trapped in a fairy field. The grass is springy, is damp, and I weave my way down the path from the mound until I reach the bottom of the field. There is no exit, no gap in the hedge where one would expect, only scratchy heather and hawthorn teated together and a signpost in a language that I cannot comprehend. I follow the aspect of this signpost, but I am only brought back to it, ambushed. I'm running in circles. The fairy's clipped laughter follows me, mocks me, scoffs my lack of understanding behind the mysterious words hung low in the snarl of the moonlight. I never figure them out and the dark pours in around me, space devours me and I am little and lost like a minority language. Until I return to this world, out of breath, weeping. Until I return to this world, relieved to be back, it takes me a while to get my bearings, to remind myself there's no such thing as fairies. I have a wavering grasp on reality. I have a wavering grasp on my identity. I am a bilingual poet, which means I am lost. I am a bilingual poet, which means I have so many opportunities to frame myself within the world and within the realm of creativity. Caribbean uh, My name is... Laura Elizabeth Hughes. I'm delighted to be here this evening to be um, sharing my style of words with some other wordsmiths this evening. Um, this first song I'm going to play for you is called Another Side of Conversation and is about welcoming newness with open arms and wanting it to embrace you back. <clears throat> Another side of conversation A trigger-happy side of life 
I'm slowly warming to the thoughts of movement And I don't care if I Curb split my lip and watch it bleeding out Can you see it now? There's this trailing light A destination Put your arms around my body Oh, come on Slow the motions A drunken hand, a subtle touch A follow through on shivered skin Have I said too much? See colored lights form a neon crown I can see it now There's this trailing light A destination Put your arms around my body Oh, come on lockdown first lockdown second they're all the same a lockdown um i had lost all sense of creativity and kind of forward thinking because i couldn't see beyond covid um and set myself a challenge to um write a little ep and i did um this song is the second song off that ep and is pretty much like my intro said trying to figure out how everybody was seemingly okay in the social media world of showing, oh, I'm getting through things and making things. And I was sitting at home like a potato, not being able to do anything. Um, so this <clears throat> song is about, about, about that. It's called Two. the sun, a 
flowers and flowers you grow Thinking I won Thinking I could be something to you Tell me, tell me How you keep it all together now Human feeling How you keep it all together now Keep it all together now how you keep it all together now Keep it all together now Show me your cure A little sugar pill in the morning And I'm sure The taste is bittersweet at night Fool me, fool me With how you keep it all together now Human feelings How you keep it all together now Keep it all together now How you keep it all together now Keep it all together now You broke my stride and my pride In the same blow Just as I was Raising a glass to the ghost slow Laid out like old clothes Waiting for someone to notice The lonely creases So tell me, tell me How you keep it all together now Human feelings How you keep it all together now Keep it all together now How you keep it all together now Keep it all together now So next up, we'll be hearing from Molly Toomey. Um, Molly holds an MA in Creative Writing from University College Cork, where she received the title of College Scholar. She's been published in Poetry Ireland Review, Banshee, The Irish Times, Cronogue, Mislexia, The Singing Fly, and elsewhere. In 2019, she won the Podrick Column Poetry Prize. In 2020, she won the Waterford Poetry Prize and was featured on RTE Radio's Arena. In 2021, she won the Evan Bulland Membership Award and was awarded an Arts Council Literature Bursary. She's currently working on her debut poetry collection. After that, we'll be hearing from Jamie Field. Uh, Jamie is a recipient of a John Hewitt Bursary in 2021. His poems are published in The North, Magma, The Honest Ulsterman, and elsewhere. He was awarded a position on the Seamus Heaney Summer School Program in 2018, and he's currently studying for an MA in Queen's, Queen's University, Belfast. He's originally from Pontefract, West Yorkshire. Shinjika Narayanan Mohan is a Dublin-based writer, performer, and cultural consultant from India. Her work has been published in Writing Home, The New Irish Poets, The Ar Ireland Chair of Poetry Anthology, Hold Open the Door, Green Carnations, 25 Young LGBTQ Plus Poets from Ireland, Banshee, The Honest Ulsterman, Impossible Archetype, and Poetry Ireland Review. In 2020, Shinjika placed third in the Fingal Poetry Prize. She's the editor of Poetry Ireland's Trumpet, Issue 9, book reviewer for Children's Books Ireland's Inish Magazine, and a Science Gallery Dublin's Rapid Residency Artist. She's also on the board of the Irish Writers' Centre. So please welcome Molly Toomey. Thank you, thank you so much. It's, thank you so much to everyone in Poetry Ireland, and thank you so much to everyone else in the introductions series. What an amazing start, um, it's incredible. Um, so I'm really, really happy to be here, and I'm standing too close to the mic, I'd say. Um, and also thank you to Fergal and Elva for letting me crash at their house. Um, so my first poem is called Series and I wrote this poem during the repeal the Eighth Amendment uh, movement or protests um, when the idea of motherhood was really to the fore 
And Ceres is also based on the myth of Ceres and Proserpina. Um, so Proserpina, her daughter, falls in love with the lord of the underworld and Ceres has to let her daughter go, um, which this poem is about Ceres letting her daughter go. So Ceres. I was 16 when I felt you kick. Tried hangers, scalding water, the spoke of a bicycle wheel. You shrieked, howled, wept in that tooth marked cot with mould like a claw. I told mothers at the playground that I was a sitter postmen that my husband would be back later. At dusk, I'd play the video of your birth in reverse. Blood and afterbirth filling me back up. Once, I left you on the steps of the church. Ran back three minutes later convinced there were bruises like berries squished under your skin. I wanted some physical thing to hate myself for. At 12, you pierced your navel with a safety pin. My fingers itched to wring your throat but wiped that seed of blood. Now, as I got your room for drugs, I find job specs, CVs, a photo on your dresser of us on the swings, me pushing you away and pulling you back in. Thank you. Um, so this poem is similar, it's the theme of motherhood again, and it's about the mother and baby homes, um, and it's based on the myth of Callisto, who was separated uh, from her son. So Callisto. <laughs> the matron stuffed a rag between her lips, told her she was lucky to live. All she wanted was a pill to ease the ache of a body yanked from her skin. The twist and rip of the cord was nothing compared to being left on the streets. Saying yes to a landlord who flicked a cigarette in her hair, offered her two weeks for a kiss. The kettle's constant scream was her child shrieking for milk. She saw him in her sleep, all salt and glisten. She longed to hold him, to feel the heartbeat she carried for so long. But doors were slammed, windows gagged, and he was gone like a star she'd never pull from the dark. Thank you. So keeping with the kind of depressing atmosphere, <laughs> This poem is called Babog, and the Babog project aims to make a doll for each of the estimated 6,000 babies that are said to have died in Ireland's former mother and baby homes. Um, and I wrote this poem at a time when I was a language teacher, so there are some words um, in Irish in it. Um, so Babog. In class, I use you to teach Sul, love, kyaun. They grasp for your tiny arms. The red heart I stitched on your chest. They pass you around so gently. 
as if a tight grip might make you slip away. They stroke your sewn mouth, whispering bale. At lunch, someone always cups you like a ladybird to give their small worries to the aftertaste of apples, cheese strings and fruit gums entering the space where I have left out a nose. I don't know if that's because to make you smell the world would be unfair or that I knew I would spend hours hovering my palm there trying to feel blood-warmed air. So this poem is called 21 Questions and shout out to my boyfriend who doesn't mind if I write about him and publish it in a national paper. <laughs> um, so thanks a million. Um, 21 Questions. Have you ever lied to me? I ask. You reply that on our fifth date you said a rock hit the wheel but it was at your finch. You didn't turn and hand me that small flame of news, but drove into the mango and gunpowder sunset. Afraid I'd make you pull up to check that there were no quavers stuck in its throat. That if its pulse didn't react to my fingers tap dancing on its keel bone, I'd want to bury it under heather and moss. You thought I'd make you pray every time we drove from Lismore to Ballynoe, that our date would become not the boardwalks, chips and anonymy, but broken wings and blood wet feathers. I think of your ex in North Carolina how she might have perched and looked out to raised earth, waiting for you with your newly shaved beard, hand luggage of notebook and craft beer, only for the fast and brutal machine of my heart to catch you off guard. Thank you. And this is my last poem, um, and it's also not that happy. Get roots. You hated weeds. I slept on the flower bed. And any time scotch, dandelion, hairy, bitter cress began to grow, I lit a match and filled my lungs with petals of ash. I lived in my gloves, barely ate with the fear I'd be buttering a crust, cracking a walnut, and you'd find some unwanted growth. My wrists were so green Horns wrote eulogies for each other on my skin. I plucked each shoot and sprout, mistook tulips for shepherd's purse, orange tips and swallowtails moved next door. The sun tucked in her flares. My body retracted like a bud into the girl I was that wanted a padded back, a kissed cheek, pulling out all her milk teeth, tugging at the roots underneath.
this is for my father, D democracy. There's a man playing fetch with his dog. Two species bursting with so much affection that the heart sings to watch. A black and white collie and a waterproof man performing who's a good boy then. The man swings the st stick as men are apt to do, but doesn't let go. The dog sprints ahead, chases an idea of a stick, and when it fails to land, is confused. The man, having left it in the hinge of a tree, shrugs willfully. The dog carries the notion the stick will return, knowing of goodness learnt. And because of the benevolence of man, or because it's time to leave, the stick reappears like a magic trick. Taken back by a hand tugging mine, I look down to see my son pointing to a van driving on the hill. And for some silly reason, I am reminded of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and Adam's chubby finger touching its maker. Wide-eyed and inflated cheeks, my, silent, my son's silent demand cripples me. Okay, um, the next three poems, <laughs> I love poems. <laughs> I, I can't stop writing love poems. It's like a nervous tick, <laughs> um, which is a pain to my, <laughs> um, I don't know what to call her, Esme. Um, <laughs> uh, who couldn't make it tonight, which is the wisest choice he's ever made, I think. <laughs> Uh, this, the first one's called uh, Morning Star. Thought about it, who hasn't? But soon as, batted it aside as impractical and in most ways improper. But the day the downpour pushed us inside, I began to doubt the doubts, seeing her out of context, in the way a barfly might, as a respite from the storm. Yes, Alcohol was a factor, but so was you and yours holding hands above the table. And when she came over to take our order, I felt a lightness. And when she dithered and shook, I cracked wise about her pen and gave her mine. And when she left to get the drinks, I leant over and as clear as rain proclaimed, I'm going to marry that girl. And you know what? With everything that's happened, I wonder if she heard. Uh, the second of her poems is, um, it's the perils of dating a poet. <laughs> it's called 4E. The third time we try, we walk through the Ormo. It is the cusp of autumn and the leaves barely hang on. There are widows, dogs fighting, and magpies bereft. I tell you this, and you roll your eyes. Not everything is a metaphor. Ahead, a funeral approaches. Shall we oblige to stand on the grass and pay our respects to a procession of mourners in football shirts, to a coffin draped in red? And because life is short, I take the opportunity to remind you, I love you. For fuck's sake. You take my hand and drag me into the mud, past the tennis courts, and out the gilded gate to a version, don't say it, of heaven. Despite your attempt, you're still holding my hand. In spite of all the insufferable words and the grief caused, you haven't got around to letting go. And the final soppy poem is uh, <laughs> Armor, Ar I can never say it, Armor Obeyed or Armor Abad. The sun through the blinds gives enough light to see your lips move. Don't you hear that? I don't. The pillow against my ear muffles the sound. The weight of the traffic, oh, something else is keeping me awake. The weight of the traffic outside, the 6 a.m. deliveries the back draft of the driver's door. I approach to kiss, but you don't respond. Once again, our senses take us to separate places. 
You leave not too soon after to catch the bus back to Belfast. You don't exactly say goodbye as the bells of St. Patrick's apparently chime. Um, the best decision I've ever made as a writer or a poet is to move to Ireland. The sense of community here is just amazing. Amongst my introductees, but especially amongst my peers and tutors and friends up in Belfast, there's some are here tonight. I'd like to thank you for the um, conversation. Thank you. This is another happy poem. <laughs> Cusp. Imagining I imagined sun, sleeping in imagined night. Stick on stars in a room made to be a nursery. A nursery that is now a cupboard full of boxes we are too tired to unpack. And all those gifts contained within are illuminated by a constellation of stars lulling our imagined sun to sleep. One day when the comets in space are found their way, and the planets in alignment are on their pre-determined paths. Maybe we'll have the courage to turn on the light, paint over the stars, and those within will resemble those without, blinded by the city light. And when we travel north to visit the ground of a newborn sky, we will see the outline of two star signs drawn in quick succession, a map and a sonogram of a faded sun, 40,000 light years away. The light we'll see, but the warmth is beyond our reach. Thank you. So, uh, I was up in undecided whether to finish on this poem. Um, as a deaf person, I don't really like to advertise it because I just I make do it as it is um, I kind of see my disability as a superpower because it makes me handle the world a bit more easier it makes me concentrate and <laughs> I don't know yeah so this is a sign poem so um, it's sign language with the images ingrained in the line and it's, it starts off as a, a, an invective about the teachers that kind of um, that taught me, people that shouldn't teach. However, because it's me, it ends in a love poem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it, it's called um, Those Failed Architects. Attention. From thumb tip to Mr. Jones's glasses, a light bulb, chemistry or physics, a crescent clock pointing skyward, English, do you speak it? Finger tapping across on the shelf. God gave you a voice, this that, use it, flattening a path. I turned to the index to find my way. Look for the curve of the J. Knowledge, a hook on a rod, a fist stiff drying upon a wall. My self-esteem skewered on a pitchfork, two signs, two, two prongs in the sign. Offhand to the class, points to his ring, eye on a stick. Wake up. Question, do you listen? A slog in air, a bend in the river. Silence, two pigs tied together. On a coat rack, a teacher's hat. Understand, the alphabet's a valley you live in with those you love. Why can't I let go? Our fingers intertwined, a kiss on the larynx. Years I did not speak. Pulled, pushed apart by all their secondary jazz. Thank you. Um, 
thank you so much uh, to the Poetry Ireland team, to all of our amazing mentors, uh, and to the awesome group that you put together for Introductions 2021. Um, I think we hear a million times, all, all the time, how writing is supposed to be really isolating and lonely, but um, I don't know, the group like this kind of proves the opposite, it certainly doesn't feel that way. Um, so I have a few short poems to read first. They're part of uh, a project um, that I started supported by the Science Gallery, where I interview researchers who are working with space weather and solar flares, and I ask them to just tell me stories about their sort of um, eureka moments or their failures, and then I turn their traumatic moments into poetry and make money off of it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so. The first one is uh, the closest I could get to a Christmas poem. I've gone full Christmas and I'm not ashamed. <laughs> Never fight Mariah. Um, so this is, uh, this is a poem based on a researcher who worked very hard and, was, uh, and set up a telescope ready to uh, have everything work out properly and then uh, rocked up to find that nothing worked at all and it was kind of all for nothing. It's called Further Research is Required. It's a Christmas fresh morning. The anticipation, the readiness, the excitement of finding yourself to be at the center of things, at the pinpoint of the universe, for one split moment, the euphoria, the absolute lack that awaits you. The absence of evidence, correlation, confirmation, inconclusive. It is Christmas morning, and there is nothing under the tree. This one's called Ensemble, about a researcher bringing her research to a conference for the first time and being very nervous about it and how it was received. In the thin moments between a thought and a breath, when a spark pushes through, we breathe into it tentatively, coaxing it to life until a roomful of exhalation sets the blaze flickering across a hundred open hands and smiling eyes. Praise is coating our skin like honey. We are friendly gods and we revel in it. The fire settles, the seeds pop open, and now there is the slow bake of embers glowing, pulsing, burning our hands. Can you feel the warmth of it? Uh, this is one about uh, how she was bogged down doing grant applications and sort of typical research and then realized she was actually very good at making things happen from a different point of view. This is called Practical Magic. In the machine, the cycle of things, the writing, the publishing, the thin white paper cut of it, the printing, the pulping, the new word document of it, and then a fissure. A moment where the machine has faltered and you are turned mechanic. There is an unexpected comfort of the tools in your hand and the clarity of a headlight and now comes the setting down of a mantle, the taking up of a tool belt. You understand the cogs, the nuts, the bolts, the conveyor belt of ideas, the doing of things, the burning bright goodness of it and the papers are left bleaching in a sunlit room while you sit, connected, electric, elated and alive, and the machine is you and it is yours. And then a final one from the series. Oh. Go on. Sure, I won't stop you. Um, this one, um, well, I think it speaks for itself and I think it's something that uh, applies across all academic things and research and just everything. It's called Citizen Science. One or two Guinnesses down, the promise of we won't talk about work long broken. We huddle around the smallness of something, the closed doors of it, the integrity of its structure. But the liquid has us loosened and the walls fall away. The realization that the idea is liquid, not solid. It is an ocean and not a pebble. And what we needed all along was not a fortress, but a fleet. Um, 
And then my last poem is going to be a bit of a long one. Um, yeah, thank you to everyone. This is class. <laughs> this is great. And we've snuck in an event before the the next round of bad times. So um, yeah, it's a it's a real privilege to be here with with all of you tonight. It's great. Um, so this is a poem I wrote uh, after I got acupuncture and to put it plainly I was tripping balls afterwards <laughs> and like my childhood like flooded through and it was really weird and terrifying um, so, I, so I wrote a poem and then I sent it to my group to say please tell me if this is a poem or the ramblings of insanity and was confirmed that it is indeed a poem so now that's now it's here <laughs> so these are my bones these are the bones I grew into, the ones that stretched and expanded, that were once small and fragile, wrapped in only the littlest meat, the smallest fingers, the little joints that didn't pop and click yet, the nail beds only just starting to fray. This is my neck that swiveled and swayed and took it all in, awake with movement, the whiplash of the world. These are my legs that I trusted, that held me well, that let me run, albeit slowly, before they collapsed in on themselves. But I did run and I did dance and I did pump the pedals of my small bike up the great slope of the cul-de-sac and didn't I fear even then the steep descent downwards. These are the pieces of my skin that were scarred. The chicken pox scratch, I remember the bleed and the itch and the fire and I remember that that skin is the same as the one I still wear. And these are my teeth but they're not the ones that have the bend and the fall to them. How I can't erase the taste of blood and rice, it's too vivid and too iron sweet, the tooth I never found again. And this was the body that was hugged by my mother, held close by her in the shower while she hummed and bounced another time less gently, with a lice comb through my scalp. These knees have met pavement an infinite amount of times. The scar tissue now a solid patch of land. The way my skin won't let me forget anything, won't let me forget every small, every small trip and stumble or slip into the dark. The first mole that appeared the summer with the hornet sting by the pool slide and that oppressive American heat where the others had swimming pools and wasn't I invited the only brown child but I didn't notice it at the time. And now my neck is a constellation of moles and freckles. When did they appear? I only just found one on the back of my ear and who is to say that wasn't the first? before the hornet summer, before the year of the kindergarten feather. And these are my bones and the marrow in them is new. The meat is freshly grown, stem celled. So much of me is new. So much of me wasn't awake then. So much of me was more awake then. But these are my bones and with my own skeleton, I hold on to myself. I reach into my skin. I stroke the places that are tear stained like coffee rings on a table. I see every goodbye etched into my child heart, the constant partings, the constant farewells, the way I spent my life missing someone. From the day I was born, I was missing someone. I have lived a life where I have never known what it is like not to miss someone. When I didn't have the words, but I knew what it was to be loved and for that love to depart and return over and over. How I miss the whiteness of my own eyes, the feel of cheap lace and velour, days of Velcro, days I can't remember, years I can't remember, full of things I can't remember until I see or hear something and something in me snaps and crackles because my bones remember when my brain does not, my kind loving brain, the way it puts things away for me. But I remember cling film and cardboard and markers and malls and Barbies and birthdays and the way American cake tastes and the way American carpet feels and the fullness of a cat. All the things my skin touched, the skin that is mostly new now, only the scars can be trusted, only the bits of me that remain, the artifacts within me. What it is to miss my own bones, what it is to remember them, what it is to find them again.
Thank you. So a huge, huge thank you to Simon Costello, Shivani Donal, Molly Toomey, Jamie Field, and Chandrika Narayanan Mohan. You can read more of their work in our digital anthology, This Is What You Mean To Me, um, which you can download for free until this Monday. Um, if you look on the posters just outside the door, there's a QR code which you can scan um, and download it, or else you can go to our website, which is poetryireland.ie. Um, we are currently the number one bestseller in British and Irish poetry. Um, we're currently beating uh, Beowulf. Um, uh, <laughs> um, so I'd like to give a huge thank you to my colleagues Paul Lenehan and Owen Rogers for their terrific work in preparing this anthology for publication. Um, a huge thank you to Laura Elizabeth Hughes for sharing some of her stunning songs with us. You can find her on Instagram at, at Laura Elizabeth underscore sounds. She's also on Spotify. Um, a huge thank you to the Arts Council, um, to Smock Alley for their gracious hosting of tonight's events and these lovely surroundings. Um, and um, massive thank you to your audience uh, for your generous attention and support. Um, so I'll leave you now with one more tune from Laura and please enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much. Um, this last song that I'm gonna play for you um, is about having too much wine. <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much to Poetry Ireland for having me this evening and thank you to these guys for sharing those incredible words with me. You have a brand new fan. <laughs> <clears throat> Tell me something real Let me see your words undress me new Lyrical feel Instinct has me, won't suppress me Wander off to find sounds To fit the mood I'm in Passing parties by, oh, you'll find me in an hour or so. Just sitting by the TV, face lit up by a static glow. Taking every speck of the room and you in. Carousel around the bell of the music, ooh. find you if you'd ask me to I swear to God I'd come and find you I swear to God I'd come and find you if you'd ask me to I swear to God I'd come and find you and now that you've been waiting and I've finally got the of you, you're pulling out the freight, loose the tear, the clothes, the distance, move parallel lines and crimes that my mind is proving. I'll blame it all on the wine this time. I'm losing, I'm losing. I swear to God, I'd come and find you. If you'd ask me to, I swear to God I'd come and find you. I swear to God I'd come and find you. If you'd ask me to, I swear to God I'd come and find you. And I see first light and I'll come. And I'm, I'm not feeling so low, love for the first time in a long while I'm just worried it won't last I see first light in an alcove and I'm not feeling so low love for the first time in a long while I'm just worried it won't last I'm just worried it won't last I swear to God I'd come and find you first light in an alcove I swear to God I'd come and find you I'm not feeling so low love for the I swear to God I'd come and find you For the first time in a long while I, I swear to God I'd come and find you